Last Friday saw a horrific terror attack outside the old city of Jerusalem, perpetrated by three Palestinian nationals, in which border policewoman Hadas Malka was stabbed to death. Following the attack, the BBC ran the story under the following headline, Three Palestinians Killed After Deadly Stabbing in Jerusalem. Joining me today in the studio to discuss anti-Israel bias within the international media is Philippe Asulin, an expert in political communication and international relations. Philippe, thank you so much for coming in thank today. Thank you for having me. All right. So, uh, was the misleading headline by the BBC intentional, in your opinion? No, it depends what you mean by intentional. It certainly happened a lot, and I think it does reflect the mindset. So, yes, in that sense, uh, intentional, they don't do anything to correct it. I think it reflects a lot of uh, ideological and psychological predispositions, which we can get into. Um, one of them is, is to reject a narrative that doesn't fit preconceived notions, pro-Palestinian notions. I think more importantly, uh, a lot of what the left, especially in Europe, is undergoing is a reticence to address the problem and a reticence to deal with the fact of terrorism. And so to blame Israel, to shift the blame on Israel, like this headline did, like a lot of the media does in, in many different instances, is a way to feel a sense of control over the problem, an artificial sense of control. If you blame Israel, it's much easier to control than if you're dealing with a wave of unknown evil that has very high costs and requires a lot of effort. I mean, that being said, though, doesn't it, you know, that it almost sounds like an intentionally misleading headline because it says, you know, three Palestinians killed in, in a stabbing attack in Jerusalem. It doesn't make any mention who did the stabbing, who was stabbed. Uh, you know, it really washes over a lot of the Correct. details. Yeah. I mean, it, and it's a recurring pattern. I think that's what matters. It's not a one-time thing. It's something that we see after every terror attack. And even the corrections take time. And, and I mean, there is an ideological agenda, I'm sure. Look, these writers, these journalists grew up in the age of Edward Said. They're growing up in the age of identity politics. Very, very strong Arab propaganda. They're not always the brightest people. And they cling to a narrative. And it's a narrative of Palestinian victimhood. And what I believe is what I said a bit earlier, to treat Palestinians as victims is in a way to feel like you have a sense of control over the situation. It's much harder than to deal with them as people who make choices and who can be threatening. So first of all, how do we prevent you know, the bias in the BBC? How do we fight back against it? How do we so, kind of notify them to stop So this? that's the million dollar question. It's what I study in my PhD. It's what I work in. Uh, the last stage is going to be the headline. The headlines now are the result of efforts that started uh, with Palestinian propaganda 30 years ago at least in the 80s. Um, the first step must be to focus on the audience and not what we want to say. The problem in the Jewish world, in the pro-Israel world, is that we're talking to ourselves. We spend a lot of money telling ourselves what we already think in very angry terms. We're doing mm. therapy to ourselves. We have to have a narrative and a story that is inspiring emotionally to young people and focuses on them, or at least non-Jewish people. Once you've done that long enough and you've studied what they want and you've taken the time to invest yourself in providing them with a story that makes sense to them and is compelling, gradually the headlines will change. If you start from the end, you're not going to succeed. So, you know, what, what's the first step? What's the first thing that we kind of need to band together to do? Give more authority to young people. Make the debate about Israel actually about Israelis. The problem we have is that people in the West justifiably perceive Israelis as a mix of what they see on TV, which is soldiers and religious people and things they can't identify with. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, they see them as an extension of the Jewish people that they live next to, which are very often insular communities, yeah. uh, don't mix. So if they could see the real Israelis, we would, always, we would already be halfway there. And I think Gal Gadot, in that sense, is doing a lot more good than any Hasbara organization ever. And I have tremendous respect for Hasbara organizations. Sure. I work for them. All right. Well, thank you so much. That's unfortunately all the time we have. Philippe Asoulin, thank you so much Thanks for coming. Thanks for having me.